Hello there, welcome to another week in my garden. Very, very wet. The actual land itself, we can't walk on just yet. We're gonna go, we're going to let it have a 24 hour break and then see if we can get back to it when it's dried out a little bit. At the moment, it's best left alone. So we're going to harvest the grapes. There's a nice crop, I'm very pleased with them. Before we cut a grape, I think for those people who, who are having a go at this, we'll just have a look where the grapes are coming from off the vine before we harvest them and then we'll bear that in mind when we prune it in the winter, okay? So let's have a look where they come from. Next right. year's grapes will be coming from here and here and there. So when we prune, we just make sure we leave that little bit of new wood that can mature and then produce next year's grapes. So if we follow that pattern right through, we should continue to get grapes on this vine. Now we've had a look, uh, knowing where next year's grapes are going to go, but when we come to prune, we'll, we'll look at it all again anyway. But it's worth bearing in mind then, if you do have to cut anything off then you'll know where we have to I think next year I will take more more of the growth off the actual stem of the vine itself so if anything else I can get a door on the shed so let's pick some grapes and we'll see how we go I'll start and then we'll show you how many we've got at the end okay I'll start this end it's just a case of snipping them back don't go too tight on quarter of an inch is plenty put them into the trunk so I'll continue on and then show you what we've got at the end right so that's the grapes harvested bit of a sticky job now there's one or two that fell off but the chickens have made short work of those are going to so the eggs will be interesting tomorrow before I'm done today I'm just going to go around all the ties that have been supporting it just to make sure there's none too tight to stop the flow of the energy back to the root ready for winter. Every tie that's on it, those that are too tight I'll just break off, probably put another one on. The few, uh, one or two has been missed you see. Um, right now my wife will take the grapes and she's going to make some wine with it. I did offer to take my shoes and socks off but she says absolutely no chance. So, right so there you are, there's the grapes. Quite a few, I don't know the weight that will come up but no doubt we'll post it at the end of the video just to say what we got off this. The vine's first crop, we did have a few last year but I just took them off and threw them to the chickens. To say that I, I grow it for this canopy so the grapes that we've got have actually been a bonus. I'm going to alter it a bit next year where I put them on these steel cables. I'll have to use some nice timbers going across to take the weight. If we're going to get that in its first year of cropping, goodness knows what we'll get when it gets a bit older. So we'll change this slightly to a timber frame, I think, and make a better support for it. The other thing is that if we have a really really bad winter we will lose some of the vines so we might have to regrow some of it back on that'll be it for the grapes at the moment i'll take these up to the house now the garlic has arrived the cloves for planting far too wet so we're hoping to do them tomorrow take these up to the house and have a cup of tea okay all right we're down the bottom of the garden today after all the rainstorms it's still very very wet so we're, we're going to harvest the pumpkins for the granddaughters we can dry them out in, and ripen them a little bit in the shed they're not going to do anything out here now when it does dry out a bit I can get on and get this bit of ground prepared for winter we'll get these picked and then we'll show you how we've got time You can tell by the colour there, they're well ready. 
Very small, but then again, very late. Very late. And I think they'll make lovely decorations, they will, for the party. There's a few more down here under this uh, apricot tree, so I'll just get these. And it's making quite a barrel load. Although that one's not quite ripe, it won't be long ripe enough. And there you are girls, you should be able to make something out of that. Right, while we're here, we'll just have a quick look at these apples. The same as always, you just lift and turn. Now that came away immediately in my hand, so now these will be ready. So in the next day or so, We'll pick these, and you can see the lovely apples, absolutely gorgeous, very nice, very sweet, very sweet apples. They're still standing a little wet yet, and it's terrible wet to get down here. So we'll, we'll pick these next time round. So we'll nip round and we'll pick the butternut squashes up, because they might as well come out as well and we'll take those up to the shed. Pumpkins, being that they're for decoration and not for eating, I shall get some a cloth in some water and a splash of bleach in it and just give them a wipe so that they'll be, they'll be nice and clean, no, no fuss or anything will grow on them. But the squashes are for eating, so we won't do it to those. We'll just get these few squashes that we've got, not a big number, but we'll take them anyway. Oh, sorry treat. There you go, look. It's, it's well ready, but it just needs a little bit of ripening, I think. The size of that one, I'm glad I brought the wheelbarrow. Yeah, they're good. Not many, but they're good. Anyway, I'm afraid there's not many squashes for you to look at, but the, I think the rabbits had the majority of them. As you see, they're still trying to throw, to throw fruit, but they won't make it now, so I'll probably clear all this. Give the tree a good mulching and clean the land out now, and get it looking a bit more like a garden. Here we are. This is the onion bed. As you can see, it's still still being built i'm double digging it because it wasn't double dug for the potatoes last year so it's got to have some hard work put into it the classic thing is to get the manure underneath in the clay and then there's also manure mixed into the topsoil as i if you remember how we did the double digging that's right right garlic it's elephant garlic it's not a true garlic, it's, it's a cross, I do believe, with a leek or leek family in there somewhere. It's not an absolute pure garlic, therefore it, it has a milder taste. So, And that is one clove, so you can see they're going to be quite big. So I've spaced them at 12 inches apart to give them room. And I'm just going to put them normal way up for the onion family and about an inch below the surface now these they really really need to be in before the end of this month i usually add them in by now i've been waiting for this weather to pass so they must be cold or when you get them out you'll get no more than that if they don't get cold they won't they won't produce more clothes so we'll have these in and then we'll put the 
smaller garlics in that we're doing over there just to show you how we do it I have started at that end and I'm going to finish the on this marker so just left you three spaces to uh, to do I so just pop them in about an inch deep. I've chosen this site against this boarding because it's very well drained if you've got a wet piece of garden don't put your garlic there they need well be well drained on a good sunny site so they'll be fine like that I just covered them up I have uh, marked both ends of the run and put a label there because it'll be probably next year before they start showing so we'll go around the other side and we'll pop some of the normal garlics in I'll just show you how we split them off so we've come around the other side of the bed now so we can plant the, the other type of garlic obviously we can't walk on the bed this is province white you can see the size of the clove to the elephant garlic it's quite a difference and then all I do just pop that there for a moment this is they'll come in like a full garlic now remember don't buy garlic from the shops and think you can plant that you must have proper garlic that's been raised for our, our gardens and temperatures one two just break them off you see that one i'm going to reject that one i don't want that one and that's what you're left with and there's the garlic we're going to plant there's another small one there you see I don't think I want that, I'll just plant these, I'll get that one in a moment. There's the ones we're going to plant, obviously that one down there is wrong, but they'll do nicely, they're nice and fat and healthy looking. Obviously you put them, that'll be the root end down, look, and that'll be the top. Same with the onions, if they've got a long tail on like that on the top, just nip it off, because it will stop the next shoot coming through if it dries out. So there they are, perfect, let's get them in. I've already put a full row of province white in, plus the elephant garlic, so I think we'll have plenty of garlic if they, and on this nice well-drained sunny piece of land, they should do rather well. It's been very well prepared, as you can see. Uh, now it looks a bit high, but through the winter that'll all sink down normally again. Uh, I'm using these pads to kneel on to stop getting too wet and stop sinking into the newly dug ground so, right, so just pop them there we're going at six inches for these now the elephant ones i went for a 12 inch but these will just do six inch but i've kept 12 inch between the rows so i can keep between the rows clean uh, clean of weeds etc and being able to give them some feed later on so i'm just going to pop them in the ground is awfully wet. That's it. There. About a, an inch or so deep, not too deep, and I still be struggling. Pop that in as a marker for a moment and then I just go back, cover them up. You can see how wet it is, look, there's not a lot we can do with it. It is wet down there. The, uh, I put the name tags on with when I've put them in so when we lift them won't, I can then enter into my book what how well they've done or um, how they haven't done well. So that, that'll be it for the garlic. They're, they'll sit there quite nicely and be even better if we can get some cold weather on them. So obviously the, the elephant ones have some pretty flowers on but we don't let them flower it's best if you take the flowers off and you'll make a bigger bulb at the bottom but if they do flower they are quite nice I've right, lifted the the mesh off these brassicas and we're going to have to take these two broccolis off because the weather's been like it is I haven't been able to get down here to do it so they've actually grown a little bit since we last saw them so we'll have them off today I shall lead the plant so that it'll show shoot out at the sides and we'll get some small ones around the edge so let's have him off
as you can see it's a nice head and it's reasonably clean there's an odd white fly but that's that's fine that's made a good plant so we'll take this one as well there's plenty more coming now you can see how we'll get we'll get more shooting out of these joints later on but I can't leave the planting too long because I have some spring collars there waiting to come through right so we'll just cut this one off and then we'll get this net back down they're good strong plants there you go just put the knife away right I'll show you the pair there you go this season's plants have done remarkably well I'm very pleased with those. Uh, we'll be having these for Sunday lunch. Right, we're back up at the shed. We've brought what we've harvested up to show you what we've done. Now, the pumpkins are very, very small because, as you know, the rabbits at the first, the wild rabbits at the first batch. So we had to set them very, very late because my granddaughters demanded pumpkins so we've done them they assure me these are exactly what they want but using them for table decorations so what you see is not normally what we do pumpkin wise any pumpkins this side are quickly chopped up and put on the compost heap I can show you Right, so now you've seen what we've got. Not too bad, I don't think. Anyway, it's Saturday today, not Friday, Saturday. We've had a terribly wet week. The, uh, the grapevine will now give me some beautiful autumn colours, hopefully. The grapes, we got £24 off of it eventually, so that's not bad. And there fermenting away nicely at the moment so that's that's my wife's department not mine it's uh but they'll they'll be fine i'm sure so as i say saturday not friday so my wife needs to get on and process this so we better get on so hopefully i'll see you next week and take care now bye